It's my honor and privilege to introduce to you my friend and the First Lady of the United States of America, Dr. Jill Biden. Dr. Biden. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Cooper. So, um, are there students in the audience? How many of you are students? Look the yes, thank you for being here. Thank you for coming. Did they let you skip class to come? <laughs> so, you know I'm a professor, so, you know, I would, so you, that's what made you get here, so that they said, okay, if you can, you don't have to attend class if you come to the, uh, to the um, presentation. So anyway, during the past few months, I've had the opportunity to see firsthand how I'm speaking to you, Gov. <laughs> I got off track a little bit. How, how firsthand, how your leadership is pushing this state forward from strengthening our workforce to investing in women's health and helping us end cancer as we know it. So Roy, you know, you are an incredible governor and Joe could not ask for a better partner in North Carolina. Thank you. And Dr. Clark and Dr. Oakley, thank you for the warm welcome to Greensboro and GTCC today. So I am glad to highlight your early middle college so that more students can enroll. And it's a question every high school student knows all too well. You know, on birthdays, in school hallways, at the dinner table, it can seem like the only thing that anyone wants to talk about is, you know, well, what do you plan to do next, right? How many of you have heard that over and over? So for many students, you know, the answer to what they want to do next is, you know, I don't know. It's, I don't know where to start. So nearly 60% of graduating high school students don't go directly to a four-year college. Six out of every 10 students. So as a community college professor myself, I teach students who are part of that 60%. And I see every day how they still struggle to figure out their next steps, still searching for an answer to that persistent question. Because for most people, a high school diploma alone isn't enough to find a great career. But that doesn't mean that there's only one path to success. President Biden is helping young people and their families find answers. So last month, he announced Classroom to Career, an ambitious new proposal partnering with states giving every student in America the opportunity to take community college courses in high school through dual enrollment. So Classroom to Career reimagines high school education, giving young people a pathway to their careers by exposing them to job training earlier, or a head start on a two to four year degree making college more affordable. And I know that's a big thing for my own students. So career-connected learning programs, that these programs that bridge the gap between what students learn and the careers that they will eventually find, that's not a new idea. Du dual enrollment is not a new idea. Many states offer it in some form. What is new is that President Biden's entire administration is committed to making it a reality for all students through unprecedented collaboration and historic investments. He sees that this pipeline of support from high school to college to career is the future of our workforce. And that's why we're all here today North Carolina has been a leader in providing those opportunities and is exemplary in transforming high school into a place that prepares students for jobs. In just a moment, we're gonna have the opportunity 
to hear from students and administrators about how these programs are doing just that. And it's not just happening in Greenboro or Ashboro or Dobson. It's all across the state. So I just visited Pitt Community College and I met incredible high school students in their, in their college classrooms. One was getting his associate's degree, training to repair cars, and another showed us how she's learning to detect impurities in her biotechnology class. These are skills that are needed for their future careers, and they're getting them in high school. This isn't, you know, a Democratic idea or a Republican idea. It's an American idea for all of our students. You know, it's an American idea that's championed by leaders from all sides of the political spectrum. Joe ran for president to help rebuild the middle class. And in the last three years, he's created more than 15 million jobs. Industries like biotechnology, manufacturing, and clean energy are thriving right here in North Carolina, and businesses are looking for workers. Classroom to Career is the link that will give high school students the skills that they need to fill the jobs that Joe created. This is going to change lives, lift up families, and grow the economy. It's what we need to do today to open up all new possibilities for tomorrow, for our young people, our communities, and our country. So I can't wait to hear more about all of your experiences. So thank you all for spending time with me today, and we'll get the opportunity to hear from uh, these young students. So thanks for being here. Thank you so much, Dr. Biden, Governor Cooper. It's an honor to be here in the great state of North Carolina. My name is Amy Lloyd. I am the Assistant Secretary of the Office of Career, Technical, and Adult Education. I'm here on behalf of the entire US Department of Education, here to listen and learn from the great work happening in this great state. And we know great jobs require a great workforce, which requires great multiple career pathways to success. So I'm excited to start with uh, our local superintendent here, Dr. Whitney Oakley is the superintendent of Guilford County Schools. And can you share with us a little bit more about the statewide career and college promise program and how high school students in your district are really taking advantage of this incredible opportunity you have? Yes, and thank you for the opportunity to join the panel. I can say that one of my very first events as a superintendent was actually in connection with the White House around learning recovery, so it feels very full circle to have <laughs> Dr. Biden um, back and listening to um, how we can grow this mm -hmm. concept around college and career promise. Also really just great to remember how important it is to have an educator in the White House, Thank and we you. don't take that lightly. Here. <laughs> So just in nature, the College and Career Promise program allows high school students to take community college and public university courses tuition free through dual enrollment. And students can plug in in lots of different ways. I think you'll hear about some of them. Some enroll in one of our early and middle colleges at our public institutions of higher ed, including here at Guilford Technical Community College. Others enroll in a career pathway at their home high school and then travel to a local college to take those more specialized courses. Mm -hmm. Some are the health sciences, the cybersecurity, the same areas that we're seeing this job growth, advanced manufacturing, supply chain management, those are those examples. But just last year, dual enrollment in Guilford County schools grew by 46%. Wow. And in our state, it grew by 12%. So students are taking advantage, employers are paying attention. And so we are seeing this rapid growth occur. The work is possible though through partnerships like the one we have with the community college, but also through the funding that the Biden administration has been able to prioritize. 
while the program is showing tremendous progress, it has also come with some challenges. For example, the CCP program does cover tuition but doesn't pay for textbooks mm -hmm. for students. And sometimes with bus driver shortages, districts struggle to meet those mm -hmm. transportation needs if they're going from their home high school sure. to the community college, which changes who's available to take sure. advantage. Um, we were able, using the American Rescue Plan funds, um, we've been able to mitigate for those challenges, uh -huh, but we right. know that we have to continue to uh -huh. prioritize the funding for the access so those programs that are allowing our North Carolina kids to participate in the thousands of jobs that are coming here. And I'll just close by, you know, I think we, we know that we're the number one state in the business and we're so very proud, but we cannot be the number one state for business and the last in funding for education. We have to continue. <laughs> We have to continue investing in our educators, our frontline workers, and those that make this happen in order to prepare our students to thrive in our global economy. That's Thank fantastic. You. I'm going to turn next to you. So sitting next to me, we have the Vice President of Randolph Community College, Suzanne Rohrbau. Rorba, excuse me, and she's going to share with us how she connects and supports employers and students through both pre-apprenticeship and apprenticeship programs, and also about the CCC, CCP program in Randolph County. Suzanne. Yes, well, thank you for the opportunity today to be able to speak to you all. And I come to you today representing one college, Randolph Community College, but I speak on behalf of all 58. We have an extremely strong system in the state of North Carolina, and we're proud of that. Um, I consider it a privilege to work at a community college. I feel like we make a difference every day in the lives of our students, but the opportunities that we get to provide to our students. And we could not do that without the state and the national uh, policy makers behind us so we thank you for that some of the ways that we've addressed these challenges at RCC you're gonna get to hear from one of our students and I say we do what we do every day because of our students and on behalf of our students but we want to provide them as much opportunity to get that head start on their education, on their careers. Sometimes it's just as important to learn what you don't want to do as a career as it is to learn what you can do. But at RCC, we've really taken an intentional look about connecting careers and education. We pulled our industry partners into the room. We asked them what skill sets they needed. We asked them what transferable trades among our businesses and industries in the county. And then we developed our curriculum and our pathways around that. We do take advantage of our CCP. Uh, CCP enrollment at RCC is about 43% of our enrollment. Last year, we served over 1,800 students, 900 each semester. Um, this fall, we're on track to serve 1,100. Out of all the graduating seniors in Randolph County, uh, I would say we're at about 36 to 40% of our graduates, high school graduates, take at least one CCP course. And whether it's one or you complete a certificate, it is career, college, and it's debt free. In Randolph County, our K-12 partners, again, we can't do this alone. Our K-12 partners, we do, thanks to the state of North Carolina, get tuition waived, but our textbooks and instructional supplies are provided by our K-12 partners. RCC, we waive all course fees. Wow. We really believe in that equitable access. Um, but our industry partners, we could not do it without them. We came together, we developed our pathways, and our apprenticeship grew out of that. It was born from that, out of the advanced manufacturing needs. Um, if you haven't heard about these small companies moving to North Carolina, uh, you know, Toyota, uh, Boone. I bet you have. <laughs> and we are doing our best to serve their needs. There's going to be over 12,000 jobs. So we believe in what we're doing in the uh, K-12 partnerships to articulate those credits into those degrees, but then to give them opportunities to be ready. But our adults also have an opportunity. Um, while we have focused primarily on advanced manufacturing because of the needs, but we have focused on our business, our IT, cyber security, health care, and public safety. They're all priorities for us, competing priorities. Mm -hmm. 
but we really believe in what we do and, and the passion to serve our students and our community. We really believe that we are the economic driver and can be that engine to propel the workforce um, and to meet the industry needs. So we thank you for your support. And if you ever want to be an English faculty, I know a great <laughs> colleague. I would be remiss not to put a plug for. Um, well, hopefully I'll have another job for a few more years. <laughs> <laughs> and we hope you It's wonderful to hear how you are working in such close partnership with business and industry and essentially reverse engineering all of your pathways and apprenticeship and also the partnership across our P-12 systems and our community college systems are so powerful here in the state. And you mentioned your student right here. We have next to me Isaias Martinez Hernandez who is going to share his experience uh, taking courses at RCC and talking about being a pre-apprenticeship pre in high school and how your work with RCC has helped make you more certain about who you are and who you want to become. Tell us about your journey. What are you studying? Um, I currently hold my EMT certification through RCC. I was able to gain that through RCC. <laughs> it wouldn't have been possible without the uh, the career and continuing college program at RCC, having that tuition waived, being able to complete that six months course to complete that EMT certification. But as a young middle, middle school student, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I thought I was going to go straight into the workforce, not be able to make it to college. Um, sorry, <laughs> nervous. You're good. Uh, through RCC, I've been able to get a head start in my career. Having that EMT has really put me ahead in the profession and the EMS, being able to work in public safety. And I thank RCC for that, for give, being given that opportunity. And yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you're doing great. Take a breath. You're, you're good. Uh, RCC has really set in stone my future plans of becoming a medical professional. I want to be a trauma surgeon and just yeah. Having that EMT, having that experience has really set in stone that I really do want to go into the medical field. I'm not afraid of blood to see all that graphic <laughs> stuff as an EMS. That's <laughs> important. <laughs> yeah. Without EMS, I probably wouldn't have known if I wanted to really become a surgeon or not until I'm there. And if I didn't like it, then I've wasted so much time. But through RCC, I've been given that opportunity to accomplish all of these goals, accomplish my EMT. Um, accomplished getting to college even. I'm uh, in the fall, I'm ready to go to NC State on a full ride as well. <laughs> None of this would have been possible with, without the RCC program. I've also completed through RCC my gen eds, which has completed my first year of college. So that's put me even more ahead of the competition in my career. I'll graduate about a year early, so that means three years in college and then off to med school. <laughs> I think that's all I can say, I can say right now. That is, I'm sorry. That is a great mic drop <laughs> moment. <laughs> Isaiah, your future is so powerful, and I love that you uh, discovered who you are and who you wanted to become mm -hmm. through public safety, and yeah. you got your IM EMT license yeah. already mm -hmm. as a senior I, in high school. Yeah. Sorry to add to that. I plan on getting my paramedic as well. There you go. And, <laughs> while I'm at state. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> He's a an overachiever, yeah, great student. <laughs> We're really proud of you. Thank you. Are. That is fantastic. Just keep going. We need you. And first generation. Oh, yeah. I'm a first generational college student. <laughs> <laughs> well, Isaiah, so we cannot wait to hear about your next yeah. steps and the great moves you're going to make in your career and the lives that you're going to save. Thank you. Um, next, I'm going to go over to Tenny Oladanjoya over here next to Dr. Biden who will share how her career-oriented courses experience allowed her to realize that what she originally thought she wanted to study wasn't quite the right pathway yeah. for her, and to instead land on something that meant more to her future. And what I appreciate is what we've already mentioned, is that you get to explore career pathways earlier on in high school so that you don't have to go through post-secondary and then decide. And so you've already had some navigation. Tell us about your career pathway journey and what you're doing and where you want to go. 
So with my career path um, journey, I found the early middle college during middle school. And for my freshman year, I did not get accepted, but I did go to a regular high school. And when the pandemic hit, I realized that the courses I was taking there was not challenging at all. So I wanted to go somewhere where I felt like I was going to be challenged. So when I reapplied to the early middle college at GDC Jamestown, I got accepted. And I, when I first got there, I wanted to do a associate in science for biology. But after my first biology class, I realized I did not want to do this at all. See, there you go. That's there you go. <laughs> Being able to try different courses and figure out what I wanted to do. I took a couple of business courses, a couple of health courses. I realized that I wanted to go to school for health policy management. And because of that, I was able to apply to different schools. And this fall, I'll be attending UNC Chapel Hill. And for what I'm studying, I hope to make a change in the price of pharmaceuticals because me and my father both struggle with asthma and the cost of inhalers are getting too high. And I feel like anyone who has medical issues should be able to afford any type of medication they need. Amen. So going to the early middle college at GCC Jamestown gave me the opportunity to advocate for myself and to be successful. And I think it's a program everyone should be able to go to. And even though most schools, like home schools, their books aren't paid for at our college, at our early middle college, our books are paid for. So I think it's a big help. And after this semester, I will be receiving an Associates in Arts and a Business Corps Administration Certificate. Yeah. Right on. Tony, that is exactly the power of career pathways, is that there are no wrong doors and no dead ends, and there's always a next step for you to take. And I love how you connected this back to your story of self and why what you're studying, what you want to do matters so much. And I know that the president has been working very hard on things like the cost of inhalers. And so um, expect to hear more about that soon. But the, the, what you care about is what we care about as an administration very much. Really appreciate your passion and your leadership. Thank you. Sam, I want to go over to you. Next to Tenny is Sam Potit. He's going to share with us his experience in a manufacturing pre-apprenticeship program, and he's also pursuing his associate's degree at Surrey Community College. Talk to us about what you're doing in your pre-apprenticeship, Sam. Yes, ma'am. So on a day-to-day -day basis, I get hands-on experience with wiring trucks and looking at schematics. I've also shown great interest in designing these schematics and pursuing a degree in electrical engineering. Um, Every day, I'm trusted to buy myself, you know, individually, hands-on. I get to work on the products that go out to a consumer every day. And these are all made-to-order trucks, so they're very challenging. And it's kind of just changed my trajectory in life to pursue a higher education. Right on. I liked your phrase, I'm trusted to do this work. You are doing real work. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. um, after receiving my first you know, couple months of hands-on training, I'm out there on the floor with the normal people, and they kind of, <laughs> <laughs> they, they all trust me very, you know, and it's an honor that they trust me to work on the same products as they are, and they just, they know my abilities, and I'm, I'm proud of that. As you should be. That's the most powerful learning is learning through doing. And in your pre-apprenticeship, you are learning and earning the skills that you need to be able to thrive in this industry. So you are going to go on and complete your degree at Surrey? Um, yes, ma'am. Currently, I'm studying for an associate's in science. Excellent. And I should get that wrapped up in about a year and a half. I'm going into Surrey with 16 credit hours already. I love that. <laughs> I mean, that is the hope and the promise of Classroom to Career and the president proposing that every single student in our country have access to those college credits while still in high school, to those exploration opportunities, to you know, be able to earn certificates and credentials while still in high school. Um, it's just so powerful to hear about your pre-apprenticeship. Really excited. Thank you. 
And then I, last but certainly not least, very excited to hear from you, Giovanni. Giovanni Rob Robinson is going to share about his experience also being able to explore different options at GTCC Greensboro in the early middle college here, and your decision to land on a career path focused on architectural engineering. So tell us about your journey to that decision and what you're doing now. So to give a little backstory, in middle school and elementary, I got diagnosed with a processing disorder and a speech impediment, mm -hmm. and so I wasn't able to really articulate the questions I wanted or process the information teachers were re really relaying to me. It was quite a, uh, quite a hard way to, for me to process it. And so getting introduced to these magnet high schools, I wasn't really, you know, I, I was, um, what was, uh, I was, you know, not really feeling that I would succeed as much as I would, but I got pushed by my counselor, my mom, to mm -hmm. really go for it. So I applied, got into the early middle college at GCC Greensboro. And from there, they just, ultimately show that I can be dis, uh, successful, even though I had these, what some people call disabilities, but I call gifts. Yes. I have these gifts that, <laughs> I, I have these gifts that, you know, most people would think are limited, but through this program has shown that, you know, if you keep on pushing, if you keep on striving to do your best, you know, 1% every day, you will get through, you will keep on pushing through, you will keep on succeeding being a scholar into in this environment, even though you take these rigorous coursework that you may go through, even that being business, that being engineering or anything of that sort. And so currently I'm a 12th grade student, but I plan on pursuing the uh, fifth year that we have for my Associate of Science. And after that, I plan on going to a double major, actually in architecture and computer engineering with a minor in business to help uh, the home market with more sustainable and reliable bu buildings for, you know, people or pe uh, the homeless specifically that okay. aren't able to really afford these type of buildings while stu still keeping the same quality or the same, you know, structures that can last for, you know, s maybe centuries on less. And so that, that's my whole journey and wrap, uh, going back to where this program has uh, helped me really understand it is first again, showing me that I can be successful in these type of environments, but also showing that mm -hmm. if I don't allow what these gifts may hold on to me, if I just embrace them and just understand how to use them to my advantage, that's where I get the best out of me. That's where I can strive and where I can succeed. And that's really what this early middle college has really demonstrated to me all these years. Oh, how you consider them your gifts. They're really your superpowers in many ways, right? And that's how you, I love that you're connecting to community. You see these problems that you want to help solve and you want to address people who you know, are struggling with housing security and how do you think about architectural engineering with, with the real people in mind and use your gifts to, to help solve some of our big challenges that our communities face. So thank you, Giovanni. Excited that you're going to go on to do the fifth year. I neglected to say that uh, Isaiah's and Sam and Giovanni are all seniors this year, and Tenny, um, Tenny is in the 13th year, and you mentioned that you're gonna go on to the fifth year, which yeah. is the 13th year where you can finish an associate's degree, uh, one year out of high school, which is fantastic. Is that, that's also what you're doing, right? <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much for sharing your experiences. Dr. Biden, Governor Cooper, any big takeaways, any ahas, any questions for our incredible students and wonderful education leaders here? I would just say that this just goes, these are just four examples of the many ways that you can get to a career now. And I would encourage all parents out there to learn about the opportunities for their children. They're much more expansive than they used to be. And you can get them off your payroll <laughs> a lot quicker uh, than you could possibly imagine with all of these great things that are going on. And I, and I commend the, the, the great work that's happening and uh, I, I wish all of these students well and the tens of thousands of others out there that are doing good work. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I would just like to say that, um, God, you're doing a great job. I mean, really, to hear about <laughs> your 
your success and, and what you're doing. And um, I love the, as a community college professor myself, you know, I think it's so great that kids can, students can figure out early, you know, wh what path that they would like to take. They don't wait and keep saying, what am I gonna do, what am I gonna do? But you figure it out early and you figure out whether you like it or you don't like it so that you can switch and try something new. So I love that every student in America is going to get a chance to have a really good paying job with the jobs of the future. And uh, Giovanni, if I could just say on a personal note that um, I love how you talked about uh, overcoming, as you say, a, a speech disability. I hope you know that my husband stuttered very badly as a child and he persevered and he had people who believed in him, like his mother and his teachers. Mm -hmm. And now, my husband is president of the United States. <laughs> to see what you're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for having us here. You know, I love coming back to the state again and again because you're doing all the right things, whether it's in business or healthcare or education. I mean, you are pushing our economy forward. So I want to just say thank you to all of the people of North Carolina. So thank you so much.